Hi there, everybody, and welcome to this Podio Basics webinar. But for now, I will pass it off to Meg. Thanks, Allison. Hi, everybody. My name is Mac Flintosh. As Allison mentioned, I am the Podio Sales Engineer Specialist here at Citrix. So we wanted to give a good little overview about Podio and what we're calling the Podio Basics 101. So really getting started within the platform. So this first page is that first welcome home page when you're kind of coming across the tool. You can see there's areas where you can just kind of sign up right here on this home page. But if we wanted to learn a little bit more, going into that features tab, we can kind of break down just all the different aspects of Podio, how this can function for different departments within your business. Um, as many of you may know, or some of you may not, Podio is not necessarily an industry specific tool. So it can be worked with and across multiple industries, multiple departments, whether we're thinking marketing, IT, project management, sales management, task management, there's quite a bit that can be done. So this is always a good area to get some you know, visual context about what that can look like. When we hop over to that pricing area, you can see that we have a couple different versions of Podio available. So we have that free version, a basic plan, a plus plan, and our premium plan. That free version is a, a bit limited. It's more so to get your feet wet and get familiarized with the platform. Um, the limitations there is you're not gonna see any of those sort of automated capabilities that tend to make Podio stand out. Um, there are some item limitations on this level as well. So you get up to 100 items within this free version before being prompted to either upgrade or to remove some items within that account. That basic version is just a little bit step up from that free where you don't have that item limitation, but it does allow you to really get into that platform and have your template set. The plus is where we start adding some more automation and the premium is where you're gonna get that full fledged platform where we can automate as much or as little as you would want to within your processes. This also includes things like calculations. So if you scroll down, I can kind of see that full breakdown of all the different features included. Whenever you see these sort of little question marks, it's just kind of expanding on some explanations of what these things may mean. And here at the top, you can see I have my different pricing. So we have that build annually. I can see that includes a 20% discount, or I can toggle back to see that monthly rate. If this is something you're considering for your organization, and perhaps you have a, a few situations you really wanna talk through, whether it be specific workflows or how this could potentially fit for your business, you are able to request a demo. There are some stipulations around that. We do require a commitment of a five user minimum in order to qualify to get that one-on-one -on -one space because we are taking the time to really build out that demo environment for you. But you're able to fill out that web form that's actually generated from Podio and someone from our team will be reaching out to make sure we can get that scheduled at the time that works best for you. So what I really wanted to do today with this being more of that basics 101 is kind of go from creating that new account through how to get those original things set up. So I'm gonna minimize this page. And here you can see I've already plugged in my email address to get me to this sort of profile creation. So as I put in my email, it already has my name displayed. I've selected an image. And here you can put in some basic information that just helps us learn more about your company so we can better support you if you're to ever come through with any support tickets. Um, for anyone who is interested, this is a real phone number. I recommend calling it if you're having a bad day. Uh, this is the Colin Oates hotline. So <laughs> whenever you need to have a little pick me up, just feel free to say that. That's my gift to everyone here today. But I'll go ahead and then move on to that next page. And what this is doing right now is actually creating my Podio account for me here. So just give that one moment to pull through. While it pulls up, we do have a question already. Um, is there a five user minimum in order to sign up for Podio? So on the online version, if you're going through online, we don't have user minimums. You are able to sign up for one user if you're just a solo employee. In order to work with anyone on the sales team to get that sales support, we do require that five user minimum as the sales system that we function and has that built into it. I'll just give this a few more minutes to create. I think while this is doing that, another thing that's worth expanding on because we do get this question quite a bit is uh, the differences in users. So you'll see in some of our documentation, we have what is known as employee users versus external users. Your employee users are the ones that are going to actually be seats within your account. So those are people that you are working with directly, uh, whether it be you know a VA or somebody that's just you know in a different department, someone within your department, those would all count as seats. External users tend to be if you're bringing a client into a particular project or a particular workspace that you'd like to be able to see, um, if you're bringing in a temporary contractor for maybe they're just helping with one project before moving on, 
those do not count towards those user totals. It looks like while this is thinking, I'm just gonna give that a quick little refresh. And here it's gonna prompt me to go ahead and log in. Great, and it looks like it just needed me to replug that in. So I'll go ahead and put that back in. So I'll go ahead and say again, work at Podio. You can see we have different options there. That's also great because you can get some recommendations for different apps that you can pull into your platform. Now we're in this new generated account. So you can see there's some data that automatically pulls in here. We do provide a demo workspace when a new account is being created. Uh, it just gives a few sample apps with some data points in there so you can get a good visualization of how the tool can work for you and how you can kind of manipulate our different templates to fit the fields that you need to be tracking. So we have a quick little tour that comes up. You are able to close that, but just kind of breaking down what these things are going through. So at the very top, you see that, you know, we've created a few workspaces for you to track your work. Workspaces are one of the main ways that Podio organizes the information within the platform. So all of your data lives within specific workspaces. A lot of times we'll see different workspaces for different departments. So if you had you know, a sales team versus a project team, you may wanna have them in their own space. You can also have everything in one workspace. There's no right or wrong way to organize that. A lot of that does come down to personal preference. The big thing you wanna keep in mind with your workspaces is that if someone is a member of a workspace, they do have access to all the data saved within that workspace. So if you do have anything that's a little bit more private, uh, maybe the finance team is the only one that needs to see that data, you wanna make sure you have less people invited into that workspace. The next item highlighted here is what we call apps. And so those are basically your templates. So for instance, you know, keeping track of a project or a deliverable is gonna be very different sort of fields of information that you wanna keep track of than a customer. So you want different apps for those things. We'll go through the two different ways to get apps within your workspaces and kind of do a deeper dive into what some of those can look like. The next item up here is how you can actually create your first item. So when we say item, we mean an individual instance within any particular app. So if you have a projects app, a singular project would be referred to as an item. When you're in your app, you'll always have that add button there, which would bring up a blank version of that template that you have in place. And finally, the ability to configure or customize your apps. So we are a very, very customizable solution. It's one of the things about Podio that tends to stand out. Whether or not you're creating your own app, which we will do today, or grabbing an app from the app market, you do have the ability to make modifications. So if you need to change up a few statuses or maybe halfway through you realize there's a field that you wanna track that isn't already in that template, you can go ahead and configure and modify to make sure you're tracking everything that you need to to be as successful as possible. So right now we're within a projects app. This is again, the one that we uh, pre-populated for you in this demo workspace account, where I'm able to see some sort of sample items here. Uh, currently, this is in what we call a card view. So it's a little bit more of that Kanban style. Um, for instance, if I needed to move this from enter to in progress, I can kind of just click and drag that over. That'll update that status. You do also have the ability to look at this as a table view, which is a little bit more like that Excel view. Um, kind of gives you that sort of full scope. Here I can even sort of pick and choose which fields are displaying from my app in that table view, and I can choose how that's being sorted. You have the ability for a badge view. These badges can be customized as well as far as what information from that template's displaying in this badge. A calendar view. So if you did want to look at this as if it's a real date and we wanted to track a project in that regard, I can look at that in that manner or an activity view, which is gonna kind of just give you sort of a running feed of all the things that have occurred within this app so you can see what's been worked on most recently. So I'm gonna hop back to that table view. And with here, we can go just directly into a sample project. Here you can see where I have the name of that project. I can set any sort of deadlines. So here I have this as a flat date. We'll play around with some of those deadlines in a bit. I can assign responsible members based off of the members of that workspace. This is wonderful for being able to pull pipeline and make sure that no one is overloaded with too many projects versus too few projects, different statuses, and then the, again, the ability for files, tags, and tasks, which we will get into momentarily. Okay. 
hopping back into that overall workspace here, you can see we give you this nice little banner that kind of breaks down what the workspace is. I'll go ahead and remove that for now. Most of your workspaces will look very similar to this. On the left-hand side, you'll always see whatever you've chosen to name that workspace. You'll always see your users. You always have the share something line, which is really good for things like team updates. That way I can kind of, <laughs> and I can learn how to type. But with that, we can kind of get away from reply all email. I can have that communication record directly on the platform that we're all working on and make sure that we're keeping that pretty harmonious. And below that, we have this running activity feed, which is going to show me all the changes that have occurred within this workspace, who's made those changes and when those happened. So again, just a really good bird's eye view or a 40 foot view of all of the different things that are occurring within this particular workspace. On the right hand side where you see these two boxes, we refer to those as tiles. So if you ever see that add tile button, that's what that's in reference to. And this is a great way to just save things that is gonna make the day-to-day -day easier for you or your team. So you can see pre-populated, we have a tile for tasks. So I can get that full task list across a workspace directly here within that homepage. Even a little area for calendars so I can keep track of any upcoming events. And one of the things I recommend always including in these tiles is your different types of reporting. So if I wanted to make sure I had a tile of you know, where all of my deals are sitting, for instance, on the sales side, uh, broken down by status or monetary value, or my projects broken down by project manager or status. You're able to create those uh, reports, save those in these tiles, and then as the information that's being reported on is updated, those tiles will update. So you can make sure you have up-to-date information at a quick glance. Again, this is that team space version. If you did want your own individual dashboard, so for instance, if an employee may function or organize in a way that's specific to them, but we want to make sure that the work is still living in that team environment, all they have to do is just hit that Podio button in that blue bar across the top. It will bring them to their own personal dashboard where they can set their own tiles. You can see that pops up right here. Uh, we're looking at our webinar right now, but it um, gives you a little walkthrough, kind of lets you know everything that's occurring. But you'd be able to set your own tiles to organize your day-to-day -day in the way that makes the most sense for you. And this can be pulling from multiple workspaces as opposed to that one workspace landing page. So I'll hop back. So what we want to do first is we're going to actually create our own new workspace. So I'll go ahead and create a workspace. With this, I can just name this, you know, webinar test. And you get two options. So you can either keep that private where it's an invite only situation, or you can keep it open where anyone within your account would be able to go in and out of that space. I personally recommend keeping things private in the sense that you have full sort of ownership and capability over who can access that data, but either are of options to you. So we'll go ahead and create that. Great, and you can see as soon as that workspace is created, I'm prompted to either add any additional coworkers I may want to, any other additional users just by adding in their email. I can set a little sort of welcome message here and then on the free and basic version, everyone's gonna be on that same regular member role. If we're looking at that plus or that premium, you do get what we call user management, which includes role types, where you can set certain people as a workspace admins or light members. Um, I very much recommend the light member role, especially if we're bringing in someone outside of your organization or if it's an employee that you would wanna make sure that you have full sort of ownership over the data within the system with. Those light members are not able to import or export with Excel, so they can't remove data from the system. They're not able to delete anything they didn't create, and they won't be able to modify your workflows or your app templates. So just something to keep in mind there. Great, so now we're within this blank workspace, and we wanna make sure we get some of those apps in here, because that's really how we're gonna be able to function and get that work accomplished. So I'm gonna hit that Add App button, and I get two different options here. So I can create my own, or I can go into the app market. I'll go into that app market first, And one thing I tend to say on a lot of my calls is we can kind of disregard that term market. 99.9% um, .9 of these are included within your, your Podio platform itself. Um, these are either created by individuals within Podio or been submitted to us through people like our Podio partners who are great for customization and we've approved of that you're able to download into your own workspaces. With this, you can search for keywords. You can look at those by function and industry. We have this sort of bucketed together for you. And you have the option of either individual apps or what we call app packs, which would be several apps that tend to work together that you can download together all at once. One thing I like to point out here as well, let's say we find an app that's close to what we'd like, but maybe we wanna add or remove a few fields or just change up some of the terminology. Even if you are getting that app from this app market, you are still able to make those modifications. 
So just something to keep in mind if something is really close, you don't have to start from scratch. You can just make those modifications. What we're gonna do today is actually create our own. So that's gonna be right here. I know sometimes this can seem a little daunting. Uh, whenever it's sort of create your own template, we don't know what's gonna go into that. So I wanted to really test on that today. So I'm gonna name this webinar projects. That item name is again, whatever individual item is gonna be living within that template. So I'll say project. And then you have general and advanced settings. So advanced settings is really when you wanna kind of determine whether things are being able to be updated or being notified on. General is gonna be where you're uh, setting sort of the infrastructure of the app itself. So for this, you have a couple different app types. Standard tends to be the one we see most often. Events are great when you're doing anything like a meeting setup or you know, scheduling a webinar calendar or anything, especially with a marketing event, that tends to be a good uh, template for that. And contact is great when you wanna use something like a database, whether it be tracking your clients, customers, partners, or even internal employees and departments. Below that, you can set an icon for any app you have. So if you did wanna have something that makes that sort of stand out, I'll click a key for this one. You're able to set that layout that we just talked about briefly as that sort of that default and you're able to add any sort of description or instructions on creating new items here. So we can go ahead and create that app. And here I come to this blank screen where I can really set up what I want this to look like. All of this is drag and drop, so there's a lot of different options you have here. Since we're looking at this as if it's a project, I have that text field that pops up as title. All I have to do to change that name is just click in here, and I can go ahead and just rename that field whatever I want to. For any of these fields that come up, if you ever notice that little carrot, this is showing that you have different sort of options for that particular field. So you can make any field within this template required. So in order for this to be saved, something must be filled out here. Um, you can say it's hidden if it's empty, and I can make that single line or multi-line in this particular field. Since again, we're looking at this as sort of a project, I may wanna bring in that sort of start date, end date. Again, I'll hit that carrot. I'm gonna hide that time entry for this particular instance. I just don't know if it's relevant, but we will keep that end date so we can show the full scope. I am also able to make this uh, be able to show in my calendar view as well. So I'll go ahead and click out there. Again, just name that project date. And now we might wanna do something like a type of project. Um, we can look at this also as a type of client. I'm just kind of looking at that in a different scope. Uh, if I have certain projects that have certain next steps or need to be assigned to certain people, it's really nice to be able to have that data point. And whenever you're kind of looking at multiple options where you want to narrow that down, that category field is going to be the one that stands out for you the most. So I can pull that in here. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and rename that. And here I can kind of make my own different types of projects. So it's very specific to my business plan. So with this, I'm just going to say alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. You notice on the right hand side, you can color code those. So if you are a visual person, that's a nice way to be able to bring that touch in. And through that carrot, I'm able to determine whether or not I want that to be single or multiple choice, whether I want those project types themselves to show in the calendar. And if I want that to be an inline button, like you saw in that previous app we were just on, or a drop down list. Other things that can be helpful here are this member field. So if I needed to assign this to a specific person or team, I can pull in that member field. I'll name this project manager. And I can even add multiple fields if I wanted one specifically for the manager and another one to keep track of the different team members. If we wanted to look at this a little bit more on almost the sales side or the CRM side, we can look at this as a sales manager um, or the director level role with maybe like a sales development representative underneath here or a VA attached. So just to kind of look at that in a different concept, concept, excuse me, um, just naming these fields, whatever works for you is a good way to pull that through. I can also pull in something like a text field here. So if I want to just generalize notes on a project, I'm able to keep track of that fully. And what I'm going to do as well is throw in one more category to keep track of status, because that's a good way to get a good scope of whether it's a deal that we're looking at or a project that we're running, where we're sitting at any given point in time. So this you know, pending, in progress, incomplete. And again, you can use whatever sort of statuses work for you. I'm just trying to keep this a little generic since this is kind of across multiple industries. Other fields worth pointing out that you can pull into this template structure, especially if we're looking at this on the CRM side, you can see I have the area for phone number and email. If I needed to keep track of any either monetary fields or measurement fields. So for instance, in real estate, a lot of times we'll see, you know, the square foot times the cost per foot plus a closing cost. So with that, you can have those different fields in place as well. 
areas for hyperlinks or images directly on the item itself. Progress bars, which are just, again, a great visual representation about how far you are throughout any project or deal in that progress bar view. Calculations are great if you did want to play around with a little bit of code or if you just needed some mathematical formulas. Again, this is only available on that premium tier, but just so you know, that is available. And then this location field tends to be something that's a bit of a standout as well. So this location field is a link with Google Maps. So you're able to plug in that address and you'll get that Google Map view. If you were to click that map, it'll bring you directly into Google Maps with that address already plugged in. So you can get driving directions or just send it right to your phone. This field in particular tends to be great for doing anything off-site. And as Podio does have a mobile app that works for both Droid and iOS systems, I'd be able to click that link and get directions to be able to drive right through directly from my Podio. So we'll go ahead and hit done and save this template. Great, and you can see we don't have anything in here yet because we haven't input any data. So we wanna make sure that we can get something here. Again, that's where I can add that item. And now I'm able to plug in the information that I would need. So again, we'll just name this test for today. Here I have more of that scope update, so I can say it's starting today and ending on the 30th. I can select the type of project. I can assign individuals within my workspace directly to those fields, add any sort of notes, and then kind of set that status in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Great. And as this saves, you might notice this box pops up on the right-hand side. Just like your workspace has that running activity feed, each item in Podio does as well. So if I'm ever making a change to this particular template, let's say I wanted to move that project type from beta to gamma, it's gonna show that change on the right-hand side, who's made that change, and it'll have a date and time stamp on it. This is also great for communication and collaboration with your colleagues. So let's say I needed to get a hold of an individual, I'd be able to at mention them right here. With that at mention, they're gonna get a notification from Podio as well as their email, so long as they have those email notifications turned on, that'll show them that exact comment and actually give them a link specifically to this page. So even if they're working on you know, seven different things, in this day and age, we all are, we're able to kind of direct their attention specifically to the item that we need to focus on. Okay, so with that, we just created an app. Again, I wanted to touch on this briefly for files. So obviously documentation comes hand in hand with doing anything as far as organization on the sales side or project side. So we do have a couple different options here for you. That My Computer option at the top, you are able to pull directly from your desktop. A few limitations there you just wanna keep in mind. It is a full download. So if you're changing that document on your desktop or on your server, you wanna make sure that you're replacing it within Podio. And each individual document would need to be underneath 100 megs. Podio is unlimited storage as a whole, uh, but that individual documentation limit would be in place. We do also have built-in integrations with all of these tools here. Um, share files integration is a bit stronger with us both being underneath that citrus umbrella, but you do have options. The way these integrations function are like a live link connection. So you're always gonna have the most up-to-date version of that folder or that document that's attached, and you'll never have to deal with anything like a file size limitation since we're not actually storing the document on our servers. When I come down to tasks, depending on the tier that you're on, these can either be manually created or automatically updated depending on different sort of conditional workflows you can have in place. But with these tasks, I'm able to name that task. I can assign it to a specific individual. I can set a due date, any sort of reminders, any notes. I can attach files here so you can go pretty in depth. And when you create that, you're always able to see who that task is assigned to, what that task is. I can click into that to get more details, when that task is due and whether or not that task has been completed. Again, what we had talked about on that workspace landing page, I can have all tasks for a workspace as a tile within that particular workspace landing page. Uh, an individual can have a tile for just their tasks within their personal homepage. And you do also have the ability for task management up here in this blue bar across the top. So that way I could be able to see all of my tasks across all workspaces, broken down by, by things like due date, uh, workspace that it's attached to, app it's attached to, or even the person that's assigned it to me. So the last two things I wanted to touch on, I'm gonna hop back into that space that has a bit more data on it. Cool, and again, we'll hop into that projects app. The first thing I wanted to point out was the ability for search. So Podio's search capabilities are pretty robust. Um, whenever I needed to find something, I can just hit this little magnifying glass across the top. With that, I can type in any sort of keyword. So I can see Facebook is here. 
And the first place it's going to search is the app that you currently have open. So if you know you're in the correct app and you just need to find that word, you can see that that's gonna pull through. If I needed that in a different location, I can hit search globally and it'll actually search across the entire account. So it's a really nice way to make sure that you can find what you're looking for at any given point in time. The other few things I wanted to touch on are the ability for filters and the ability for reporting. So these filters, as long as you have a field within your template that's a tangible field, you can place a filter on this app to just view the things that are meeting that criteria. A lot of times we'll see different filters broken down by person that's assigned to an item or a status of an item. You can also even do things around deadlines or uh, date fields. So just something to keep in mind, if you did want to see sort of a limited view or be able to just look at the things that are assigned to yourself, you can throw those filters on in this list will update to just show you the things that meet that criteria. If you have filters you're using quite often, you can even save those as a view here on the left-hand side. So you can see I have sort of almost little shortcuts where I'd be able to click that and it's gonna immediately put that filter in place. So now I'm just looking at the ones that met that website team criteria. If I needed to revert back to that full list, I can just hit show all and it'll bring me back to that full list. For reporting, you're always gonna have this create report button within your app. And you get a couple different options here. Um, again, on the basic and the free version, as well as the plus version, you're going to be mainly in that count style reporting. So this is really effective to see how many projects are within a certain status or how many deals are within a certain status, or even broken down by how many deals are assigned to an, a specific individual. Um, when you're looking at that premium tier, again, that's where you get those calculations. This is great if we wanted to do any sort of reporting around forecasting, where we're doing a mathematical calculation, being able to get sort of an average, a sum, a median or a mean, and kind of pull that together in a, a good scope report. And these reports can also have filters on them prior to being built. So if I just wanted to see the reports within a certain quarter or within a certain month, that is a limitation I can put in place. For this, I'll go to that count style report and I'll do an items per, let's say we'll break it down by status. So I can see all of my projects broken down by the statuses. Again, on our different tiers, you have uh, different options as far as what I can visually display as. And when I go to next, I'm able to name this report. So I can say, you know, project by status, that unit, sometimes you can leave it blank if you wanted to do like a little shorthand so you could see that that's the particular project, we can do that as well. And you have a couple different areas where you can save that too. You are able to save it to what we call the app report, which is just this link here. It would show you all of the reports built on this app in one location. You can save it to your personal dashboard. So if it's a filter of just yours and you wanted to be able to have that quick, easy access, we can do that here. You can save that to your employee network, which is a bit of a catch-all space. Um, there's not apps that live in with this, but any of your employees are going to be immediately routed there. So it's good just to have a nice team space to get updates and maybe a, a bit more social than opposed to a designated work. Or you can save it to the workspace homepage, which are those tiles that we spoke of earlier. So I'll select that option and we'll go ahead and save. And then we do a quick refresh here and you can see that that's coming through now. Great. And that's going to route me directly back to that workspace where I can see that that tile has now been built in place. Um, again, this will update as the statuses that are being worked on are updated. And if I, for instance, needed to take a look at those ones that are in progress, this does act as a link as well. So I can go ahead and click that total and it'll bring me into that app with that filter already in place there. Yeah. Last but not least, just a small thing to touch on before we go to questions, Podio does also have a built-in chat feature. So it's very similar to something like Slack. The major difference between those two is that Slack is a freestanding platform while this is a feature that lives within Podio. So this cannot be popped out. This will always be within the Podio platform. With that, you can still do individual or group messaging. So we call it almost like the channels that you might see in Slack or in Teams. Those conversations will archive throughout the life of your account. And since Podio does have, as I'd mentioned previously, that mobile app uh, that's working with both Droid and iOS systems, those chats can come through that app to your phone with push notifications. So very similar to a Google chat or a LinkedIn message. All right, everyone. And that is sort of Podio Basics 101. Wanted to make sure that we had a nice webinar available for people who are really just getting started to make sure they can get their mind around the easiest way to get things set up and how they can make this function the best for themselves. Um, with that, I think it would be a good time if, we, if there was any questions that we wanted to make sure are covered before we wrap up. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so go ahead and, and throw your questions in. We do have one. Uh, Dave just really wanted you to show the tasks. Mm -hmm. And that I, I love the tasks. I work on tasks every day. <laughs> but if I don't very have true. Tasks, yeah. I do not get anything done. Um, so yeah, if we could show off that a little bit more. Yeah, not a problem at all. So here you can see I clicked into that task management across the top. Again, these can kind of be 
on their own. They don't necessarily have to be attached to an app item in Podio. We just tend to see that happen quite often. But when clicking into that task management, you can see it's prompting you for this little tour. There's even a shortcut and how you can quickly create those, such as that capital T, and a little video that you can watch as you're playing around. This is kind of breaking down how you can assign them. I'm gonna go ahead and close this to just walk you through. But here's where I can assign it just directly from that task management itself. Here's where I can view all the things that um, are basically my own. Again, broken down by due date, uh, individual, workspace, or app. I can then click into that to be brought directly to that task. If that task is linked to an item, I can click into that item as well. So it's a nice way to just make sure I have my directions correct. And at the very top, I'm able to see not only my tasks, but the tasks I've assigned to others, uh, my completed tasks, as well as all completed tasks. And again, these are really, really efficient to be saved as different tiles, especially in your individual workspace, or excuse me, your, your homepage, if you will. All right, good. Um, Dave, uh, there's, there's lots of questions coming in. <laughs> so, um, is there a standard report list um, for reporting, like the, I guess, pre-made ones? I don't believe there's any pre-made ones. A lot of it comes down to your own individual app setups because that's the field that would be reported on. And since no two apps are exactly the same, uh, we really want to make sure that people have the capability to report on whatever they would need to. Uh, the one recommendation I will make is those category fields that I'd show are absolutely your friends. So if it is something where you're you know, picking between different options and you want to organize in that way, I would highly recommend using a category field as opposed to like a text field to designate that because you're going to be able to set that sort of count style report that I showed much easier. All right, Kathleen has a great question. She's trying to determine if Podio is the right product for her. The task that she needs is to upload individual client statements to different individual client folders on ShareFile. Mm -hmm. Can Podio automate that task? That is actually something that can be automated on our premium tier. Um, we probably want to speak with you a little bit more in depth on what that looks like so we can get a demo together for you. So that would be a great way to make sure that, you know, we're meeting those needs and kind of show you what that feature looks like. Um, I know with this being a one-on-one, we didn't touch much on automation, but just a very quick overview. All the automation within Podio is condition and trigger based. So it's very logic thinking. Um, those if then statements that kind of define the rules, what must be true or not true in order for an item to occur. But with uh, Podio and ShareFile both being underneath that Citrix umbrella, uh, the integration between Podio and ShareFile is actually quite strong. So that's something I'd love to be able to go over with you on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis. If you wanted to perhaps get us your contact information, we can have someone reach out to get it something scheduled for you. I got it for you. Um, another one, can the relationship field connect a workspace instead of an app? So that's a great question. We didn't touch much on relationships today. Relationships can only go app to app. And if I was to even modify this and I can show you, let me quick go ahead and modify that template for you. Right here. So when I drag that in, it's asking me what app I want it to reference. So I can't reference a full workspace, but I can do it to an app in a different workspace. So for instance, if you have sort of a sales side as well as like a project side, I'd be able to use that relationship field to connect a client from that sales workspace to a specific project in that project workspace. This becomes very powerful, especially when we get into automation um, and can be quite helpful with things like reporting as well. So if you're doing multiple projects for the same client, you'd be able to see all of those projects linked underneath that client app. Great, perfect. And then uh, how are client statements set up and the external users you were talking about? Yep. So if you wanted to like bring a client into a specific workspace, you just invite them in by their email address, which you would do in that workspace landing page right here. Again, just bear in mind, if you are bringing a client into a workspace, they do have access to everything within that workspace. So you don't necessarily want to bring them into a space that has other client information. Um, we'll see that sometimes if you're running a project for a client and you want to give them access to those project updates that might be going through. But it's as simple as just hitting that invite button and being able to plug in their email address here. One of the other options that we have in our upgraded tiers is what we call a guest user. And that's where I can share an individual item as opposed to giving access to a specific workspace as a whole. And that's gonna be done in that share option. With you're doing that individual item, you can also have that user be a read only user. So that way they can come in and view as opposed to making any edits. And one of the things that we've seen be really effective, especially with our premium tier with some of that automation, 
um, if a client doesn't want to come in and be learning a new tool, but they want to make sure that they're getting communicated with as things like statuses are being updated, um, our premium tier does have the ability for templated emails that can send out. And so one of your condition trigger workflows can say, if I've gone from enter to in progress, I want the client or the submitter of that project attached to be email notified that that change has been made. Super cool. That is just so cool. Um, there's a question in here that everybody's been avoiding, so I might be putting you on the spot because I don't know it either, but can you elaborate more on how we use uh, integrations such as Google Sheets and Google Drive? So Is that a thing? The Google Drive integration, let me pull you back into a project. If I'm being completely transparent, we tend to be a replacement for Google Sheets, mm -hmm. um, where the sort of fields you'd keep in a Google Sheet would be like the fields you'd keep within the template here. If you do have a document within Google Drive, that is one of those file services that we work with. So it is that live link connection that I had mentioned on earlier. Um, kind of just talking about integrations in general, Podio is an open API tool, so it is open source. There are so many different integrations with outside tools that exist, but most of those are managed through third parties. So things like a Zapier, a Workauto, an Automate.io. Some of them are native, but a lot of them tend to come through those third parties. For those integrations, you would need to work with that third party for any sort of specific questions as they are the ones that created that integration as opposed to um, us at Citrix having created that integration. Great, great. Um, another uh, quick question, I think we're wrapping up. Um, uh, how would you set like a client database, like a CRM mm -hmm. system? No, um, touch on that. Yeah. Great question. And with that, instead of creating our own just for the sake of time, we can go into that app market. I apologize, my mouse is just being a little finicky today. <laughs> Give that a second to think so we can see those options. Cool, so I can see my different things here. Here you can see I actually have that app pack where it's just directly to sales management. So if I wanted to build directly off of here, I can. I'm personally just gonna go ahead and search for a client's app. And you can see I have some that are broken down specific by industry, some that are a little bit more sort of all encompassing. So with that, if I wanted to go to a leads and clients or a contacts or a clients, I can, I'll do that leads and clients here. So I'll go ahead and get that app. And I'm determining what workspace I want that app to go into. So in this case, I'll say that one that we just created that webinar test. Cool. And now I can go ahead and try that app because that is now in my workspace. So again, we'll add a new one. So here you can see this template, it's the same interface as looking at it for any other use case. This template itself is just geared a bit more towards that specific client information. So being able to tag in their name, their phone number, their email, um, any sort of status designation that you'd wanna put, whether it's you know the first phone call versus this has been a lifelong client, kind of help you determine which buckets need the most attention. Um, any sort of data that you wanna keep track of, again, location, fields, and that's going to look in that app view the same way that any of those apps would. So you know you can do it in those different views, whether it be card, badge, calendar, uh, table, or activity. You can run the same style of reports, the same style of filters. It's all about just that template setup. So it's a really nice way to look at this for multiple eyes. It's just whatever sort of information you need to, you need to be tracking, as long as those are fields within your template, you can absolutely succeed there. Other just small thing to point out here, because a lot of times people are coming to Podio from other instances, um, especially on that CRM side, you do have the ability to import and export with Excel. So as long as you can get that existing client list into a CSV file or an Excel file, once you've created that template within Podio, you can go ahead and import that in. It allows you to field map to make sure that the fields from that spreadsheet are going to the correct areas of that app. And you can pull that existing client database just directly into this platform. really cuts out on some of that sort of manual data input or double data entry, which is the bane of my existence. So anything that we can make smoother or easier, I'm all for. For sure. Well, I think that's pretty much all the questions we've had, we've had a lot. I, I really appreciate everybody's enthusiasm and attentiveness and everything during the webinar. I hope everybody learned something. We will be doing some more uh, Podio-based webinars for the rest of the year, so keep an eye out for those. And we look forward to seeing you there as you guys all become photo experts like us. So thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody.